flashes and cool topics, everybody. Today is a very special day. Uh, Bridget and I are beyond excited to have Laura Geller from Laura Geller Beauty on the show. Welcome, Laura. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I am delighted to be with you both. And I have to tell you, if there was any conversation that I could have, it would be about hot flashes <laughs> for <laughs> sure. Oh, and we'll get to that. <laughs> Bonnie, when do they go away? Just saying. You would think, right? Postmenopausal, yeah. you would think they go away, and they don't, not always. No. no. Absolutely. But we, we're thrilled to have you on to talk about your new campaign where you are showcasing models, women over 40. And bravo, thank you. It's time. We are thrilled. So I guess the first question I have is, is what made you, what made you make that decision and why now? Well, you know, it, it wasn't a hard, it was not a hard decision because we knew that the majority of our clientele was over 40 and um, we spoke to them, but not like we wanted to and not the way we could um, until we got laser focused on the fact that we need to speak to the biggest part of our demographic, which is women over 40. That said, it is a hard decision business-wise because you do have to weigh whether or not you will then be icing out a majority of women under 40. So it's sort of a very fine line um, that we have to tread, um, but we feel that, you know, we've been doing it subtly anyway in the models we use and the products we develop, which we can get into, but. I just felt like along with my whole team that it was time that we really did a exercise in knowing who our demographic was. And we did a really big brand building session um, and it took a long time. And we were able to find out who our real customers are that you know really are the biggest purchasers of our products. So that's how we came about it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so, I, I just appreciate so much that you've done this because Colleen and I always say, what are we, I can't even remember the percentage, but I know you would probably know from all your research of the consumers that we are, how much we consume in this demographic. And we, it, it is, you know, we can almost count on one hand how many companies focus on us. So we are very appreciative of that. And yeah, you have cool. a wonderful product too, to target our, our demographic. Thank you. Right. Thank you. I exactly. <laughs> well, I, as I said, I've been a fan for years. And, and I was telling Laura before we got on the show that my 30 year old niece and my own, well, I won't say my mother's age, but she's older than I am. Um, mom both love the products. And when I, I was called a Geller gal recently, I was thrilled. Thank you very much for picking me. And they were, be, they were like, how did you do that? Oh my gosh. Like they were sharing it on all social media. You would have thought like I won an award, which I guess I did, but <laughs> they did. were because, <laughs> thank you. But they both use the product is my point. Like my 30 year old niece loves Laura Geller makeup and so does my mom. So it really is multi-generational. So even though you are advertising now with models who are 40 plus, there are still 19 year olds who are using you say 19 mm -hmm. to 90. That's so right. that's what I say. How has the response been to the marketing? Well, I have to tell you, we did this very quietly. As an example, um, another article came out from, um, I can't remember the magazine offhand, it'll come to me. And somebody posted it on LinkedIn, not from our company. And so it's getting picked up everywhere and you know we were happy to talk about it but we didn't expect the onslaught of incredible feedback from people saying it's about time and you know i would have thought you know there were other brands doing it and they probably are but i'm not sure they're speaking to it the way we are um so the the reaction is so favorable and it doesn't seem to be offending a 19 year old. Um, they're still coming, you know, when we launched um, a highlighter when we were at Ulta, when we used to be in store at Ulta and we launched a highlighter called Gilded Honey. And Gilded Honey 
was this beautiful Italian made highlighter. We still have it. And I cannot tell you the influencers and people that came to our brand, famous people came to our brand very young. And that put us on the map for a whole other demographic of customers and people, men and women. And so I think that we still offer things like that that will always appeal to a younger segment of people. So we're, we're thrilled about what we're doing. It's authentic. What is your most popular product? Oh, that's a hard one, but I would have to say spackle. I, I would think I have the spackle right here for the YouTubers that I've got an authentic. <laughs> there it is. I love yeah. it. I love it. it. It is, it's just, it, it just hydrates so well and just right. evens everything out so well. It is, and then you don't even have to put on a foundation with that's it. Right. So that's exactly right, Bridget. You, you know. uh, yeah, I thought that um, I thought that might be it. <laughs> but um, so You'd where did right. you where did you come up with this product? Um, how did this come to you? So you know, uh, my background is really how I studied makeup with theater and film and television. It was because they had a makeup course. And I just thought, oh, I see makeup, the word makeup. I didn't realize I was so naive that what I was studying was a very different kind of makeup um, when I first got into the business. And I started, I started doing TV and film and theater because that's what my background was in and that's what my teachings were in. And I would hear this expression that I think a lot of women use, I didn't coin it, it's sort of like, I hope you have more than makeup. You know, I need some spackle today. And we all know what spackle does for a wall, right? So I would hear that over and over again from a lot of the television personalities I'd work on. And they'd be like, I hope you have more than makeup in that makeup kit of yours. And what we learned was in theater and film makeup was that you never put any emollient on the face, like moisturizer, any serums, nothing like that under makeup because the makeup needs to stay for hours under hot lights. So I would do makeup on a matte dry skin. And realistically, that is not the way you want to do your makeup for everyday life. And one day I was working on a very notable celebrity and she would say it. Well, she said it more than once. In fact, she reminded me of it because she said, had I known that that invention because of me was going to be such a big thing, I would have asked for some equity in your company. <laughs> and um, she's still very relevant today and we're good friends. And so I, I had that moment where I thought, well, what if I can create something that makes you feel hydrated and like your skin had a second skin, like a silky smooth finish, but didn't penetrate the skin because when you put, think about it, if you put on something emollient and put makeup on top of it, it's going to go into the pores because your skin's crying out for moisture. So um, I worked with an R&D lab and in early 2000, I launched my very first spackle on QVC and um, I did not expect, there was maybe one or two other brands I think that had an under makeup primer, but nobody else heard of it. And mm -hmm. I never expected the reaction I was going to get that now 24 years this year that I'm on QVC, we now have like up to like nine different spackles and it is still our like number one selling product. I could never wow. have imagined that wow. I would create a category. That's amazing. Yeah. Not, to, not to mention you are the, I, I think the longest running makeup line on QVC right now, if I'm not. That is true. Interested. That's true. I started wow. the same year as Bare Essentials but I started, I think, like a month or two before them um, in full transparency. But yeah, we're very proud of that. And I'm still the same, the, the same face that's on all these years. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. that, what do you attribute that to, that, that relationship with QVC? Why do you think it has been so longstanding? Oh, I think it's, um, I think it's the relationship I have with my customer. I think they have built trust in me. I have not, you know, defied them in, in product, in how to, that, the, the learnings that I've taught them. And I think that it's symbiotic. You know, I love my customers. I know so many of them by name. I'm in touch with so many of them. 
you know, I do Facebook lives and I hear from them. And I think it works both ways. I need them to fuel me. And I think I help, I believe I do, inspire mm -hmm. so many women. And I think it's really a trust. And I think you have to build trust that doesn't happen overnight. So I think that's why it's been able to resonate and last as long as it has. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think when you see the person who created the product and showing you how to use the product, it's great. And I love your YouTube videos. Oh. I, I could watch every single one, like binge watch oh. your YouTube videos. Um, and oh. didn't you, I think one was just released today and I think it was targeting um, 40 and older women or mid midlife women. Yeah, Very today. well could be. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so you were a makeup artist before this. You were oh, saying. yeah. 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 I, I mean, and, hey, I'm a makeup artist. You I, are. That's right. You know, I'm actually a licensed cosmetologist, which means I have a license to do hair. But okay. I didn't know back in the day that, you know, at the time I went to beauty school, you needed a license to touch someone's face, a cosmetology license, you no longer need that. Um, so I went through the rigors of like, literally learning how to finger wave ahead to pass a state board exam. So I'm licensed um, to do that both in New York and New Jersey state but you no longer need it. So oh, I'm no wow. longer doing makeup because my life has been turned upside down with all the appearances on QVC over the years and, um, and product development and being involved in those areas and, as, and marketing. So I don't really have time to do makeup any longer. I miss mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, but I do love your videos and your demos on how to do the makeup. Yeah. And, and we were just saying our, our midlife lifestyle expert, Melissa Myers, who actually did her makeup for her wedding, I did. which is such a small world because it, we love her on the show. She comes on a couple of times a year and talks about fashion trends and different things like that. Well, she's the mm -hmm. right person to talk about that. Let me tell you, she's <laughs> aspirational. I mean, nobody would ever believe that she is the age she is, which is young, mm -hmm. but it's still amazing. She does not age. She's ageless. Yeah. <laughs> she is. She's, she's beautiful yeah. inside and out, which is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a rare thing to find for people. Mm -hmm. So what made you say, I'm going to start my own makeup line? What prompted you to do that? Yeah, I think everything I did in my career really was customer demand. In fact, I always feel like I was late to the game. You know, for an example, I was doing makeup all over New York City and I was renting spaces and hair salons. I never really wanted to have my own boutique. And customers were like, why are you in this place? And what is this place? And it doesn't matter where I was. They wanted me to have my own boutique. And so eventually I opened a boutique that I had for 21 years in New York City. Um, we closed it in 2000, late 2012. And they had coined it the um, Cheers of the Upper East Side for makeup. And people would just come in and we'd pour coffee and tea and we always had fresh cookies. And I wanted this place of refuge for people to come to, but also to have privacy when they got made up because we had little private rooms. And then I was selling makeup there because obviously people wanted to buy what we put on them, but I didn't have the bandwidth to make and create products because although we were busy and we were popular, it wasn't like the minimums that you have to have in order to create your own product when you work with a lab. So fortunately in 1997, I think it was, yeah. Um, yeah, 1997. I was approached by a beauty buyer from QVC who said, you know, we'd love to have you come on air. And I thought, oh, I would love to do that. And if it were not for QVC, I would not probably have been able to create the kinds of products that we have in our range today. Um, but that gave me a platform to create things where, you know, if for an example, an R&D lab would request that you had to have a 5,000 minimum in order for them to run the product on the line. 
you know, I could never have done that before. I remember my first appearance on QVC. Um, I remember selling 750 of the same item. It was a contour and highlight collection. That's what I went on air with. That was my very first item. It was a three piece kit. And when I went on air, they had bought 750 and I sold out of the 750. I, I almost fainted. I thought I've not sold 750, forget one item of a couple different items in less than seven minutes. Are you kidding? And so I was overwhelmed. I was shocked. I couldn't believe how you could reach the masses of, of people. Um, and I, I, I thought maybe it was a one and done. I didn't even think that I was coming back. I thought I sold out, I'm done. And they came back with 1200 in order for 1200 of the same item. And um, so really it was because of customer demand. And I just would keep hearing, well, what else do you have? And what else can you create for us? And what other new items do you have? Um, and what I really did when I had to think about creating product was that I didn't want to do anything that was something you could find on a shelf in a drugstore. I needed to find something that was going to be uniquely different, but easy to use, um, fun to use, goof proof. And so I looked in my arsenal of things that I always felt like were great. And I had them made and tweaked in formulation and color. And also hearing what the customer wanted, you know, we love this, but we wish you would do it without that. You know, and that is how everything came about when it came to making my own line. Customer request. Mm -hmm. Is is that where the baked the baked balance and light <laughs> that all of that that because that is something so unique. You know, the baked product is so unique and, and beautiful and, I mean, and it's beautiful like, and easy to use, like you said. You know, yeah, it's you know that story is that bronze and brighton baked bronze and brighton was my first item. In 2004, I launched that. And that came about by the buyers at QVC saying, well, what else do you have? And I was like, oh, can I just, can you just like, isn't this enough? And I remember, you know, I would go to every uh, cosmetic beauty show where vendors would have booths um, to, to find out, you know, what was new, who was out there. I was doing it all myself. And I had a submission of this, this bronzer that was not called Bronze and Brighton and it was in my vanity drawer and I used it like every day. I'd open my drawer and I'd take a powder brush and I'd just put it on. And when the buyers came and said, okay, you know, we need some new. I remember opening my vanity drawer and looking at this thing and going, what is this thing that doesn't go down? It still looks as new as when I got it who gave it to me? I was turning it over. It had all kinds of labels on it. And I researched and found out um, that it was made in Italy. And the distributor who had sent it to me from my review, when I contacted, when I figured out who it was, I was like, I don't understand what you're telling me. What do you mean? Like, how is that made? And he was like, look, I'm taking you to Italy. And I was like, okay. And <laughs> okay, twist my arm. And <laughs> we went to Italy. And in those days, they let you in in the factory. And I literally went in and saw how they made products. And they made for a lot of very prestigious, very prestigious lines. And I thought, why aren't these other brands talking about this gold standard of how things are made? And so I gave them my first order for this bronzer. And it was one color that we made it in and it, it fit most complexions. Um, I even, instead of calling it, you know, a universal color, I named it, I don't even know what I was drinking that day. I named it regular. <laughs> I mean, I really had to have been drinking a lot of vino. Maybe I was in Italy <laughs> drinking a lot of vino. There I you still go. have compacts where the bottom says regular on it. And eventually QVC said, you know, let's, can you make one lighter? Can you make one deeper? Um, we have three colors now we have, we just launched another color in it and we are launching another color. So we'll have five bronze brightens 
Um, that's sort of how things go. Same with Balance and Brighten, which is a foundation. We launched it in one color because it, was, it had six pigments. So it really worked for most skins. You know, it wasn't like I had a marketing specialist. It wasn't like I had a brand um, developer that understood how to build a brand out. I did everything by the seat of my pants. I made a lot of mistakes, but I also did a lot of things right. I was gonna say, yeah. you did more right than mistakes because- Yeah. That you I, know I, about, that you know about. Let's put on camera, off camera, <laughs> that you can tell us later. Um, <laughs> You know, one of the interesting things, and I think for anyone who hasn't actually looked at your baked products, is that they literally are baked for 24 hours. Like, it's not just a term used loosely. Like, the fact that you have the terracotta plate and then you put the makeup on, they bake it for 24 hours. That's amazing. And that's why, is that why it looks just so pretty, on, like, in the actual case? Because it really does. A work of art. I mean, Mm -hmm. You see the artisans who make it. There it is. I mean, yes. wow. It's Bridget gorgeous. is holding it up for the listeners. Oh, I'll hold it up again. <laughs> well, I'm oh, holding it up yeah. for the, the, the YouTubers. Yes. Right. Thank you. I appreciate mm. that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is truly a work of art. I, like I said, I mean, I lived in R&D labs and I could not believe what I was seeing. I thought it looks like they were baking, like right. pies and cookies. Mm -hmm. Um, it would, you know, and I was astounded um, by the, the way it's crafted. And they are artisans. In fact, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's only women working in the factory. They're only on the line. They're only allowed to work a certain amount, a certain amount of hours per day. Um, it's, it's, it's handcrafted. So it's really beautiful. And I'm not you know, it's funny, it started off where I launched Bronze and Brighton because I loved it and I couldn't believe what it did to my skin. But now it is a culture. I mean, people don't want anything unless I give them baked. I mean, they'll buy other things and we have other things because you can't do everything from one factory. They, are, they don't have the capabilities of doing every single thing. But I have to tell you, in more ways than one, I hear like, what else is coming out that's baked? I mean, once you try it, you see the difference on how it performs on you. Yeah, well, I have to tell you, I have it on and I've taken my glasses off, but I had to, I just had a tennis uh, lesson. <laughs> so I had it on before my tennis lesson and I came in and pretty much tried to do something with my hair yes. and came on and it's still Your like- skin? has a beautiful glow to it. Yes, and I it just does. played tennis. I just was playing tennis. So that's everybody, people who watching, you know, YouTube, that's why my hair looks like this. But, yeah, but my what? makeup but looks your great. skin is glowing. But my is. Laura Geller makeup looks great. So I, I, it, it does. I thank, you. I thank you for that. And I hear that about the product too, is that, you know, people who live in extreme heat, people who are outdoors, people who, you know, garden, exercise, whatever it may be that they're able to wear these products without feeling like they're asphyxiated. They don't have to forego using products that make them feel better. So uh, it's, a, it's just a win. It's such a win when you find something so uniquely different. Absolutely. And you can blend it different ways that you want because there are different shades within the baked product, which is That's great right. for day or evening. That's right. I I mm -hmm. love that. And, you know, yeah. as someone, Bridget knows, Bridget loves makeup. I am I love the makeup. type of person. She does. And that's wonderful because I'm the extreme where I know very, I don't understand a lot about wearing makeup. So I need products that are easy to use and that I can consistently use. And Laura Geller's absolutely those types of Yay, products. Um, so and I say that honestly, because I'm not the type of person who understands the 20 different this and the, you gotta use this layer. I just want to put some powder, <laughs> want to put my primer, put some powder on and go, you know, and mm -hmm. every product that I use, it's just very natural. I don't feel weighted and I don't feel like it falls into the cracks that start to develop as we get a little older. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what leads me into the next question. Women over 40 tend to be very vocal about what they want and what they don't want. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, fine lines and wrinkles and pigmentation of the skin are two big problems for us. Mm -hmm. How have you used Lord Geller products to kind of address those two concerns? Well, you know, it's, you're right. And we've earned the right to be vocal. 
And I think as we get older, we become less filtered, but in the most polite way. Right. Um, and I think part of what we do, we do because I am a woman who's 62 years old and I have done makeup for so many decades and understand the needs of women of all ages, but especially women who have hyperpigmentation, dark circles, um, uneven skin tone, large pores. I mean, these are the things that we do. Our lips get thinner, our jowl starts to sag. So when I'm creating product, it's always to solve a problem and how is the ease of use? So that if you weren't very handy with makeup, and also, if you need to get out of the house quick, because by the way, even if you're a celebrity, because I've made up celebrities most of my life, they would say to me, listen, you need to teach me how to do this because you're not here with me all the time. I need to know what you've done. And I would go and I would try to teach them and you could see they were short of patience and they would say, okay, you're just going to come back. You're just going to come back. So I understood the needs of everybody and how to make it look good quick. And so when I do formulation, I'm thinking about long wear. When I do concealer, I'm thinking about ingredients that will help create a smoothing effect under the eye, but have a little ample coverage. Um, I'm thinking about highlighters that give you a lift and light where you need them, but don't sparkle. You know, so everything I do is for, I imagine, not just a 62 year old face or a 40 year old face. I'm thinking about women who may be 70 and 80 and beyond because it needs to work and translate on everybody. And of course it can't always, there's gonna be things that people go, that's not for me and that's a given. But for the most part, I think that's one of the things we do best. You know, We did a whole revamp of all our spackles because when I launched them, they had certain ingredients and certain things that are no longer acceptable today. And there are ingredients that are breakthrough today. So it was a big overhaul to pull everything, wait till all of those products were gone from inventory at QVC or wherever else we distribute our products before we could launch. We had a lot of angry customers waiting for spackle. But once I learned that there's a new polymer that makes the makeup last, makes the makeup last longer on the skin. And we no longer want to put parabens in spackle, even though parabens are approved by the FDA. There's such a war over these controversies, but why use them if you don't have to? So um, I think that's what is always in the forefront of my mind is how can I appeal to most everybody who's over 40, 40 and beyond. And is that why you use the term approachable beauty? Because I've seen yeah. you describe beauty well, in that think, context. You know, I think approachable beauty um, is not aspirational beauty. Aspirational beauty is looking at JLo and going, oh, I wanna look like JLo. Um, approachable beauty is being who you are, running out to play tennis in the middle of your workday. <laughs> And being able to come back and fluff your hair and know that you could still look good. Right. Um, and what is it that you need to feel good without having to do everything? You know, I mean, listen, let's face it, before the pandemic, um, and if I had to go to an affair, a black tie affair, you know, a charitable function, I spent more time on my makeup. But there's a new normal going on and people mm -hmm. don't want to spend that kind of time. And to me, approachable beauty is what's comfortable for you and what makes you feel good in your skin. And that for me is individual to each person. And that's what I mean by approachable beauty, that you don't have to forego things. You can do whatever you want um, and not look like you're overly made up and still do it quickly. Mm -hmm. And you have some great YouTube videos on to how to do that. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What do you Thank think, you. if you had to recommend to women over 40, like what should you have in that drawer when you pull it open and you want to put it on your face? What are must-haves that they, they should have in that drawer? I'm going to say, well, maybe more. I'm going to say a number of things. 
what you choose to do is up to you because let's face it, if you're running to the supermarket or if you're running to just be on a Zoom meeting, I mean, everything's different for each person, right? So this is not for everybody, but if I had to say what I think should be in your drawer, whether you use it all or not, would be a great concealer, a foundation that's quick and easy. Um, listen, I think when you get to a certain age, I think your skin starts getting really dry and the feeling of powder does not feel good. And you want something that's creamy or liquidy or moisturizing because it's malleable and it moves with your face instead of fighting the lines and wrinkles that powders sometimes do. So I think you need to have that thing that's quick. And I think you have to have something that gives you a little moisture too. I think everybody should have an under makeup primer. I think you should have it. Um, blush is my biggest thing. I think so many women don't use blush. And I, you don't even have to put it on, you know, the right way. As long as it's the right color and you just put it in the apple of the cheek, the glow you get from wearing something that has a little pink in it just makes you look healthy because we lose pigment as we get older. We start to become more sallow. And even if you have rosacea, even if you've got a lot of pink in your skin, when you put blush just on the cheekbone, one, you're creating dimension by putting it on the cheekbone, but you're adding that lift. And so I feel like a lot of women don't wear blush and I think it's critical. Um, so that's face. Um, I think you can never have enough lipsticks and glosses. Um, <laughs> But I would probably say, believe it or not, lip liners, like creamy lip liners that are waterproof, water resistant, because you can't sculpt your lips with lipstick or gloss, but you can with lip pencils. And if your lips have gotten a little thinner, or if you don't see that shape that you used to see, um, like I used a lip pencil before I came on our Zoom today, um, because I'm able to really cheat and sculpt more with a pencil than I am. And also it's not thick and heavy the way a lipstick might feel. So you might want to invest in a couple different colored lip liners. Um, and then for eyes, I have a 3E philosophy. And it's always been, and it's what I learned when I studied theater and film makeup, because you learned about anatomy in theater and film makeup. You literally learned the science of the anatomy of a face. And that's not what I signed up for when I took that course. I was like, oh no, I just really wanted to learn how to put on purple eyeshadow. And like now I'm learning about like bone structure. And I did not sign up for that because I wanted to be a makeup artist, but thank God, because it set me on the right path. And so what we learned was how important it was to do eyebrow, how important it was to do eyeliner and how important it is to do eyelash. So even if you just quickly swipe across the lid, a little blush that's left on your brush, just so you have a little bit of harmonization between your cheek color and your eye, or even if you just put a little bit of um, a neutralizing colored shadow and you don't sculpt out your lid with crease and under the brow and all that stuff, those three things are gonna bring out the width of your eye the opening of your eye, how open your eye looks, and the brow shapes the whole eye area. And, you know, as a makeup artist, I have to tell you, when I did makeup, I couldn't wait till I got to those things. Like I could be putting on the most gorgeous eye makeup application, but I would look at my client in the mirror and I'd say, oh my God, wait till she sees what's going to happen when I do that brow. I would like hyperventilate going, <laughs> I'm just going to flip out. I mean, it's gonna be so gorgeous. So, you know, I think it does take a little skill, you know, knowing how to do eyeliner and eyebrow, you know, it does. But I always say rest your elbow on a tabletop. I always say your mirror should be this close to you. If you're leaning over a sink in the bathroom, you're already doing yourself a disservice because you're trying to get to the mirror. I think that I tell women to take the 10 time makeup challenge mirror. If you haven't heard me say that before the, yeah. <laughs> um, whether it's five times seven or 10, I know some people would say, do I have to? I don't wanna look at myself in that mirror. But if you're having sight issues, um, 
you and I both know how important it is to have a magnifying mirror that's non-distorted or invest in a good mirror. Um, and the other side could be, I make up in a 10 time makeup magnifying mirror because I see every mistake in the world. And I'd rather see it there than when I go outside. Um, and then I flip it over to the single side just to make sure what I see in 10 looks like it should look when I'm facing you like this. But those are just key things that make such a difference. And I think you should be sitting down when you do your makeup. So I'm gonna ask you, Bridget and Colleen, do you sit or do you stand? No, I did for I a stand. while and now I'm standing. I used to sit, but I saw your video and you had your coffee and, and I'm like, it was kind of nice when I was sitting, I have a bench and everything. So I think I've got to start sitting again because I saw your I, video. You know, not everybody has a setup where they can do it. So yeah. it's not easy. And so if you don't have natural light and if you're making up in the evening, you need, I mean, it could be an inexpensive Conair mirror that you buy in a drugstore. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to be an expensive mirror, but, or that you get on Amazon. But if you could find a place to sit it, what it does for you is one, you can get the mirror closer to you and that's critical, but also you'll be in less of a hurry. And even if you're in a hurry, the best way I could describe it is you'll enjoy the metamorphosis mm -hmm. and it will be more of something that you want to take stock in. I see people who, you know, I watch the habits of women and when you're leaning or when you're doing it in a hurry, your makeup looks hurried. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think it just slows you down a little bit. It just, it says like, okay, get mm -hmm. that favorite morning drink, put it next to you, set yourself up with your things and try it that way. Mm -hmm. And I do have my magnifying mirror. I, I, yes, <laughs> I, I do. I'm like, I have to have, I have a travel, oops, a travel magnifying mirror as well. But I, you know, mm -hmm. I really like having that. But yeah, it is kind of like a meditative, you know, it could be part of a meditative part of your morning, you know, to do no that. No question about it. Mm -hmm. No question about it. So if you can, you can. If you can't, you know, it's not, it's not a hard, fast rule, but it's just something I try to preach mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because you don't think of it. You always think, how fast can I do this? So I can move on to something else. You don't think of it as a relaxing kind of... <laughs> stop what you're doing but it can be it really can if you're sitting down and you're even if you're at night with a glass of wine before you like go out for dinner and you just do it that's true i don't think yeah i've got to get a chair now like, you'll have to watch her video because it makes you want to drink a cup of coffee so badly <laughs> and, <laughs> and to, yes i was like oh that looks so good i just yeah, need no, coffee. I, mean, too. I mean this morning i was on air at uh 8 30 and at seven o'clock I got up and before I even jumped in the shower I came out to my kitchen and went right to that curd and I made that coffee I mean you know I'm, I, when I talk like that I, you know I'm a coffee holic um, <laughs> I'm proud to admit it um, and and it, I have to tell you it just I prepare myself I have a real routine for how I do it and I don't it's it's a fun ritual it's not a bad mm -hmm. ritual mm -hmm. yes you know, over the pandemic, things have changed so much. And I know even on QVC, now you're not going into the studio, you're actually doing it via Zoom. How has that year in the pandemic changed as far as how you've showcased the brand and things like that? Well, yeah, I mean, listen, the models, the hosts at QVC are on their own. So they have to be able to do their own makeup because they don't have a makeup crew there any longer. We would come down and I would have a leading makeup artist do the model's makeup or a few makeup artists. And, and sometimes I would do a host or somebody with me would do a host. So you have to hope that when they're presenting your product that their makeup looks well and it's reflecting well and it looks like what you're describing. So that's a little cumbersome sometimes. It's not always spot on but you don't have control over that. Um, but then there's something authentic about it because now she, people are watching going, wait a minute, she did that herself. I think I can do that. And so there is something to be said about the realness of knowing, you know, 
they did that themselves. I mean, let's face it, models tend to have a good skill set about doing that, no matter what their age is, you know, because they have to learn how to do that on themselves and they know their face as well. So you typically don't see a model ever looking bad. Um, <laughs> but they're a host of all ages and all ethnicities and you know, they admit to struggling with their hair and makeup and it could happen. So that changed it a little bit and not being there in real time to interact with the host changed the dynamic a little bit. But I think the customer was really pleased to see um, their favorite vendors um, in their own surroundings. They didn't mind. They were just happy they were there. Mm -hmm. Right. It's true. Yeah. They got to, it, it I mean, it's already humanizing when you're on video and audio and people can see you, but to actually see you in your home, it mm -hmm. kind of makes it almost cozier. And like, yeah, oh. more relatable. Like, yeah. yeah. Right, Absolutely. exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it was, for me, it was a great year. I had been driving to QVC for 23 years on the Jersey Turnpike, Pennsylvania Turnpike. I can say it by heart, stopping off at Molly Pitcher, exit seven for a Starbucks coffee. Um, <laughs> And there's the coffee. I, what? Mm -hmm. There's the coffee reference. <laughs> and I would always, no matter how late I was to QVC, that Molly Pitcher stop right there because they had a separate Starbucks and it was easy to get in and out. And um, I was a little bit tired from driving back and forth. And sometimes a couple times a week, and sometimes getting home at two in the morning, and sometimes having to sleep over. And so for me, it hasn't been. Um, you know, a detriment. I mean, it was sort of a little bit of a plus being able to be home. Mm -hmm. And I was just curious, I was going to ask you about that. You know, you have, when you're on QVC, you have to be there sometimes at midnight, at six in the morning. And how did you do that for 23 years? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think I was in like, I think I was robotic. I think they'd be like, okay, we have this time, this, and I would just go, okay, okay. Okay, and I can't believe when I look back, it's amazing that it's only been a year. March 20th of 2020 was my last show in their studio. And I remember the CEO coming down to the floor, you know, to the broadcasting floor. And I said, oh, hi. And he was like, hi. And I, I said, rumor has it when not maybe going to be broadcasting from here. And he's like, no, I don't think so. He said, do you, would you be able to Skype in? And I was like, yeah, I, sure. And he was like, I think we may be discussing having to do that. And it's, it's only a year, but it feels like it's been years. It doesn't feel new. It feels right. It feels um, humanizing. It feels mm -hmm. like, oh my God, it was not humane the way I was doing it. And my son will remind you. He'll be like, hmm, if I had to add up all the times you left me, since I was a little boy, I would have to accumulate maybe a total of three to four years. I'm like, great, thanks. Make me feel worse. Nothing like the child guilt, right? It's supposed yeah. to be the parent guilt, not the child yeah. guilt. Well, oh, I'll man. tell you, it helped because whatever I did, he does his own laundry, he cooks for himself <sighs> and cleans. And so, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. He became an independent young man. So, yeah. but it was crazy. And I don't know yeah. how it I really yeah. the, the lack of sleep, the lack of sleep. It's like, if, if my sleep is messed with, then I am really off. And that, wow, that is incredible that you did that not for easy. that many Looking years. Back, it was not oh. easy. Oh, no, not I give all. you credit. I don't, I don't think yes. I could have done that. Because you have to be fully done and ready to go for seven or 10 or 20 minutes, or sometimes you do an hour. So it just depends. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just did it because it's, it's what you know, right? You do right. what you do. We all do what we do. Some people may be going, oh, you know, you're complaining about that. I wish I had that to complain about. And they'd be right. I love what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I was tired most of the time, especially as I got older. Um, when I got out of the car after two and a half hours, it was a little bit of a, yeah. you know, <laughs> where I didn't do that when I was 40, you know. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I loved it and it was my job. And it was, you know, I didn't see it as a, 
like, oh, I wish I could Skype from home. I would have never thought of that. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how long this will last. I'm pretty sure that things are going to open up. I see a light at the end of the tunnel, and I think we'll probably be back in the studio. But I pray it won't be to the degree of what we did before. Right. And, but what a great example you were for your son. You know, look at to, for a woman, you know, to show him, look what this my mother did and started this company. And, and still doing. This for all the, and still doing. Yes. So what a great example. Thank you so much for saying that. Thank oh, you. You're welcome. You're welcome. He would agree with you and he would say the same thing, you know. So it makes me proud. I read his some of his college essays and I was sort of, you know, delighted to know that he really admired that. And I think we can say that most women can say that about their children, whether they're working or not. You know, mm -hmm. I think um, that's the beauty of being a woman. We are caretakers. We take care of families. We work, we do it all. Um, and we're stronger than a lot of other people. Yes. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> And Bridget and I often talk about as we hit midlife and beyond, we start to earn those freedoms that we worked so hard for when our kids were young. And now we start to earn those freedoms of maybe you don't want to be in a studio at midnight <laughs> doing a today's special or, you know, it's just the, so many people say, oh, we we're missing now, you know, the kids are grown and, but there are freedoms that come with those journeys because you get to see your amazing children as adults and That's what- exactly right. And pieces of you when they they're doing things and interesting them as their own people. I get such a kick out of it. I love seeing Me my kids. Too. I know mm -hmm. there's nothing like it in the world. And um, yeah, it's it's a blessing that I've been able to really be there for him this past year. And you know, he's a sophomore in college right now. And and you know, for all of our kids who had to pivot like we did, but it's, I think it was harder for them than it was for mm -hmm. us. We're older, we have more experience. We, right. you know, um, I'm not saying it wasn't hard for older people because a lot of people felt, listen, that's a whole nother topic, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, um, it, it's nice to be able to have reunited with our families because mm -hmm. we had to, we were forced to slow down and it's a reset button. And I hope we will come out of this remembering how important that was and don't if we all come together and say we're not going back to the craziness if you lived mm -hmm. a crazy life mm -hmm, um right. then we all stand up together we won't do it we won't do it right a little kinder a little more grace for everybody heck yeah everybody out there yeah, heck yeah. and i do think many companies have seen that it can be done from home you don't mm -hmm. necessarily need to be in an office but a lot of what you have people traveling for, leaving their families, you know, being in the office, some of it could be done at home. So hopefully it will slow the pace down a little bit and allow so. people to, you know, people realize you can still get the work done with your screaming child in the background or yeah. homeschooling over there. It can yeah. be done. It so. can be done. I think it could be done um, more successfully. I mean, of course, there are certain types of jobs, obviously, that cannot Right. Um, withstand working from home, many kinds of jobs. But for those that can be done, I think it saves the employer um, money and aggravation. And I think the employee is, is more rested and better at pivoting and working harder. And so, yeah, I think to your point, I think it's proven that it can be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to see Laura Geller products go in the next couple of years now that we're opening up a little bit and where do you, what do you see as the next step, especially when you are now exclusively using models over 40, would you like to see? Yeah. You know, my, when I started my own brand, my motivation was always, um, Estee Lauder back in the day that if she could do it and become a household name, you know, my dream was, to make sure that my legacy would live on, that the Laura Geller brand, if I'm no longer here, um, if I step back, could sort of um, live on. That's my dream long-term. Um, and over the next couple of years, I think really what I want is for more people to learn about the brand because there's a lot of people that still do not know who we are. And it may be because we're not in mass distribution and it may be because we are not 
deeply distributed any longer. And so I, I just want the word to get out. I'm very pleased with the channels of distribution we have because I think for me, my biggest frustration when we used to be in Sephora and Ulta, and albeit that we were successful there, but it was hard to manage those businesses. It was really hard. And my biggest frustration was if I showed up at a Sephora and they didn't expect me and I would go over to my 50 unit and I would see things with holes in them or dirty or missing. And I'd be like, I'd hyperventilate and go, oh my God. I can't like take this, like, why doesn't it look clean? And, you know, why isn't there an instruction about how to use it? And, you know, you can't communicate what you do at point of purchase as well as you can um, in the forum of QVC um, or YouTube or things like that. So I think the platform for our brand would be to do more streaming, whether it's on our own.com, our own YouTube, to continue to be busy at QVC. Um, for as long as everybody will have me, I would love to keep being out there and, and, and doing that for the next couple of years. Well, we definitely would love to have we, you out yes. there doing it because I just can't speak highly enough of the brand. I just mm -hmm. love your products. I really do. Thank and um, I think that the speckle hydrate is like a game changer. <laughs> I'm with you on that. It I is. love that spackle. I love, love that's my favorite one. Yeah. I know. Yeah. My favorite. Yes. I, I know you love them all like your children. But <laughs> they're, they're so like little. If I had yeah. a pick one that was the best to me, it would be hydrate. Yeah. Because, you know, to me. Yeah. It's, it's just our skin. It just starts drying up on our face and all the hormonal changes. Products don't seem to address that. Like the, mm -hmm. what you used at 20 isn't always what you can use at 45 when your hormones yeah. are changing, really but the hydrate, good. you can use that. You know, my, I have two daughters and many things go missing from my makeup drawer <laughs> and I never see get them. Get you again. a lock. I'll get you a I, lock. I really <laughs> think I need to, because my older daughter is 25. She is, a, she does makeup so much better than I do. And oh I'm God. like, where did my, I need that. I don't know. Oh my God. So I, I may have to put a that's a fun problem to have let me just say it really yes. is it's a fun yeah, problem yeah. to have I laughed because you know I always thought I was going to have three children when I, I always wanted three children and I assumed I would have some girls in the mix and you know I had one child and it's a son and <laughs> I and he has no interest in my makeup and I'm like Hmm. And my mother, God bless her. She's very simple. She only ever wore a little pancake makeup and a bright red lipstick. And um, my sister, who I sadly lost in December, also was very plain Jane. And so I was like, I can't even like, I, you know, I, would, I would come over and my sister would be like, I just need balance and brighten and pink grapefruit. That's it. Don't bother me. <laughs> I'm like, what about, like, didn't you see who I was on with? Yeah, no, I just get me that. <laughs> That's no fun. No. Feel free to feel free to come to Nashville, or we will fly up there, and you can play. Yeah, with when we can. Fun. Yeah, go. No, we'll I do lunch say, and makeup. Yeah, I but, but I always it. I've loved makeup since a little child. Me too. I took I love I took dance lessons, and my mother I had to miss once because I was sick, and Mom said, "Well, you'll you'll do a makeup lesson." Well, I thought that it was about makeup, and I was so excited. And I was like, oh, good. I've got to get to put on makeup. I was like four. And she's like, no, honey, you're just going to take another dance lesson. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oh, goodness. my God. How cool. so, it was just, so I've always loved makeup. But my daughter is in North Carolina. She's 25 as well. So she's in here to take my, steal my makeup. But when she is in town, she wants to go through what I have. Do you that have anything so extra? What do you have, mom? What do you have? <laughs> oh, see, <laughs> so I it's very that. fun. Mm -hmm. well, it's, yes. Well, you love it until you need it and you can't find it. And then it's <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's Not so point. much fun. But yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I get that. Yeah. I get that. 
Well, we just want to say thank you so much, Laura, for coming on the show. This has been an absolute joyful conversation. And please, guys, check out Laura Geller product. Make sure not just to follow Laura Geller Beauty, but because I don't do enough personal social media, I need everybody to follow this girl, Laura J. Laura Gell Okay, Laura okay. J. Geller on Instagram, guys. You, I promise yes. you, if you follow, she does respond. Because yes, I have exactly. You have and responded guys, check to these out, time. Check and out her YouTube videos. You oh my goodness. I think I, I just, I could watch them. I could binge watch them, like I said. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you I had one about the stars that you had worked on, famous people. And that was, I loved that so much. I mean, the Jimmy Stewart story. <laughs> Great. Just what she's the, you were, about I was going to say, you kind of have to share it with the listeners yeah. now, Bridget, because they're like, oh, I'll let her share it. It was so funny. Right. It was very typical of what would happen to me because you have makeup artists are first in, last to leave. So you get there early. And then when they're ready to film, by the time they're ready to film, and everybody's mic'd and ready to go, shut the air, shut the phones, everybody quiet on the set. And you know, you have to sit and be quiet. And I fell asleep. And I didn't just fall asleep, I snorted. I was like, <laughs> and people turned around when Jimmy Stewart, you know, he think about if you can know Jimmy Stewart, uh, how he spoke. And it was, mm -hmm. it was very, at the time he was being interviewed, he was a little elderly and it was slow, very melodious. And, um, and I'm sure it was a gripping conversation, but if you asked me what he talked about, I wouldn't have a clue. I just knew I powdered his face and took a little nap. That's all I could tell you. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great story. Oh, goodness. <laughs> but he didn't know it was you. He didn't know it was you. No, he yeah. did not know it was me. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Yeah. None the wiser. That's good. Isn't it great when you yeah. wake yourself up and snoring and you're like, what was that? Like, <laughs> especially on a set, on a set where everybody's supposed to be quiet. Yeah. yeah I, I, was, I could not believe I did that. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm flattered that you enjoy the YouTube videos and I'm really humbled that you invited me on as a guest and I enjoyed our time together so much. So Thank you. We Thank are humbled you so that you much. were able to come on. We're so Thank happy. Yes. Oh, I, we were just thrilled. So thank you so much. And come on next time when the new products come out, because we oh, would, love, would love to. Or maybe share some more stories. because those. Oh, awesome. there's some more stories. Okay. Okay. I will Chapter hold you to that. <laughs> Chapter two. There you <laughs> go. To be continued. Thank you so much. Thank you.